Alexa, play surfacing. Surfacing by Slipknot from Spotify. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my first whiskey review. It is a bourbon, so it's a whiskey with an E. Um, and do excuse my very red complexion. I've just come off the back of filming another video where I ate some absolutely fantastic Mexican food that was quite hot and full of chilies. Link up there. This is the number nine Iowa whiskey from the band Slipknot. Small batch, it's 45%, 90 proof, comes in a 70 CL bottle and it's from the Cedar Ridge Distillery. Now, I did not buy this for this review. I bought this about, it's coming up for a year ago. For a bit of context for people who aren't watching this straight away, we're currently in lockdown three. It's late February, 2021, and I bought this kind of mid lockdown one, 2020. So it's, this has probably been sat in my cabinet for 10 or 11 months now. Um, and the only reason for that is simply every time I buy a bottle of whiskey that's um, I'm not going to say pricey because as far as whiskey goes, this is still fairly cheap, but it's not a cheap whiskey. Um, anything, especially when it looks nice, I generally try to avoid drinking it for a while and I've got no idea why I do. As you may have been able to tell from the slightly cheesy intro to this video, I am a massive Slipknot fan, which uh, is another reason why I've kind of been savouring this for the right moment. Um, and let's be honest, there's been no moments in the last year. So, hey, let's get it cracked open and do a review on it instead. Slipknot and Cedar Ridge Whiskey, two groups of people born and raised in Iowa and committed to quality and hard work. They collaborated on the number nine whiskey, which in addition to Iowa corn, gets some extra spice from its rye content. I do like rye whiskey, so um, maybe when it's rye, it's not really a whiskey. But anyway, it says, I hope that you enjoy it as much as we do. Live life and always be safe. Cheers, Clown. Um, I always find it weird when Clown from Slipknot gives out kind of um, kind, heartwarming, meaningful things after watching him hit people in the head with a bat for so many years dressed as a demented clown. But Mr. Grant, as you know from interviews, you are indeed a lovely person and I hope this whiskey is as lovely. Now for something this, I generally try and avoid putting products in a glass with a different manufacturer's mark on them, in which case, which in this case is maker's mark, especially for a review because, well, mixed messages. Um, but this is by far the nicest and, and best glass I own for smelling whiskey. That nice large aperture really opens up the flavours. And again, from Maker's Mark, is this massive ice cube maker. Um, I am a heathen. I do enjoy ice in my whiskey. I'm sorry, but much like everything else in life, I am not an expert on whiskey. I simply know what I like and what I don't like. Um, and Maker's Mark is one of my favorite accessible whiskies if you like um so if you're into maker's mark then we might be on the same page let's get this very fiddly ice ball into that it's a very satisfying sound isn't it please enjoy responsibly it's a nice big thick heavy bottle on that. a bit fiddly but that's enough. is this going to be a cork top i hope it's a cork top It's a cork top. Uh, well, actually, it's a fake cork top. Although I've had a few whiskies with real cork tops, they're generally nicer ones, so you don't want to drink them particularly quickly, and the cork starts to erode after a while. So hopefully, the synthetics uh, actually last a bit longer. Ooh, oh, that smells divine. Start off with a moderate portion for now. As I say, I'm definitely not a whiskey fanatic. I enjoy all sorts of whiskeys. Scotch whiskey, unfortunately, doesn't enjoy me all that much and gives me almost instant heartburn um, along with anything else that's kind of smoky and peaty. So uh, whilst I appreciate and enjoy the flavour, I generally don't buy them because it just burns. Bourbons and Irish whiskey is generally where I go because it doesn't have that effect. Um, and I'm particularly a fan of good bourbon because I enjoy that kind of taste profile from a short drink. I have to say, if you are a whiskey fan and you like drinking whiskey with ice, these things are insane. I think I got that in a gift set with a bottle of Maker's Mark a few years ago, but if you can find one, they are just brilliant. Okay, let's try and get some. I'm going to try and pretend I know what I'm talking about and talk about how this smells. So, as with all whiskies, there is an element of petrol on the nose. Um, it's actually quite mild in this. It definitely smells boozy, but it's not burning 
instantly. There's some sweeter notes in there, some maple and some woody pine. It's not smoky at all, and a little bit of vanilla to boot. That's all every that's that's pretty much everything I can discern from it. I'm sure there's a hundred more different uh, notes in there that someone with a much more agile nose than mine would pick up on. Let's go for a taste. Oh, that is delightful. Oh, that is really good. Um, every review I've done so far has been fantastic. But to be fair, almost every review I have done so far would be stuff I would tend to buy anyway, even if I hadn't tried it before, because I think I would like it. So. Not a huge surprise there, possibly. Normally I like to compare things to uh, other variants that are more accessible to give people an idea of where this sits. Um, this is not on the Jack Daniels vibe particularly. I mean, it isn't that it's an American whiskey. It's incredibly smooth compared to any of the Jack Daniels variants. It's got a much better taste profile than any of the Jim Beam variants. The closest I can get is that this is a smoother drinking maker's mark with a few hints of buffalo trace. And the dash of rye whiskey, obviously, because there is rye in it, but um, there's a particular brand and now the name is just, I can see the bottle, but the name is just ready me and I don't have any to check in the cupboard either. Um, but anyway, that's kind of the area that it's sitting in, but it is so incredibly easy drinking. Wow. When I bought this bottle, I also bought a bottle of Uncle Nearest, I think it's called. And that has a bit of a backstory because Uncle Nearest, who created that recipe, was the person who taught Jack Daniels how to mash and distill whiskey. That had an incredibly detailed flavour profile, but it had quite a lot of burn, and it was the same ABV as this. This hides its strength incredibly well, with the exception of the fact that if you think I was red when I started this video, my head is now even more uh, swelling as a result of the alcohol content in here. Um, but that is absolutely delicious. Wow. The temptation to try and get Slipknot puns into the this review is um, is pretty strong, and I think I've done pretty well so far not to include any, but a, uh, a disaster piece this is not. This is one of the few whiskies I think I could enjoy equally without icing, actually. Let's test that theory. Okay, we've got a fresh glass. It's nowhere near as fancy as the Maker's Mark glass, but it will help us discern if this is one of the few whiskies I have tried that is as palatable without ice as it is with. Don't need a lot, don't want to waste it. He says, dripping it down the glass. I'd be interested to know, anyone watching this because they're going to buy it, or anyone watching this because they have bought it and tried it already, how many of you bought it because you are Slipknot fans, and how many of you just bought it because it's a whiskey with an interesting looking front and a good description? Comment below, because I'd be really intrigued to know. I know that I bought it primarily because of my affinity with the band, um, but also because I'm a big Bourbon fan, so it just made sense but i'd be interested to know how many of these they're selling to people who are just whiskey drinkers and not necessarily into their music okay it's a little bit more petrolly on the nose in that contained space and without the ice Ooh. okay so putting ice in it seems to very quickly dampen down kind of the strong alcohol vapor that's in it to the point where this is i would can say in this example feels like there isn't a strong alcohol vibe in this there is some but what the ice does do is take away some caramel notes at the end. That, if you can get over the initial alcohol here, is actually a lot sweeter afterwards than it is mixed with just a little bit of ice. I think the temperature being brought down masks that a bit. And um, if you do try this, I strongly recommend you try it both ways because, well, that's easier sipping, but much more now, especially now it's cooled down even more and thinned out a little bit a real piney finish to it, whereas with this without the ice, it's got a little caramel kick at the end that you just don't get with that one. Otherwise they're pretty similar, obviously this one is starting to taste more and more watered down as that ice melts, but yeah that is interesting. So, I think that's it for this video, there's not much more I can say about this, I really like it. If you've tried it, let me know how you feel, are you going to buy some or not? As always, thank you very much for watching. Please like this video if you haven't already. Subscribe if you would be so kind, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.